Monkey! 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 Oh man! We're going already! We're going already! Oh, hello everybody! Hello, alright, I'm, I'm getting comfortable. I'm, I'm sitting to the side. Since I moved my TV, it's in like a different place and it's like a weird angle I go to. Hello everyone! So, uh, so we're recording. My god, I, there's been a lot of prep that's gone into this set that I'm doing here. A lot of prep. So much grind. I just decided like a second ago, I was like, I'm, I'm done. We're, we're playing the game. I'm going for it. And, uh, and, wow, within just a couple of seconds, I'm already live. So! Awful lot to talk about. First, yes, uh, there was like a weird visual bug in the last two episodes. I think what I'm gonna do is like do just an hour or so with you guys. Stop and then check and make sure everything's okay and then move on. Because my microphone sounded really crappy last two episodes as well as I'm fiddling about with that. Hopefully now it sounds better. I, I don't know. Anyway, hi guys. There's been... A fair few hours worth of playtime since the last time you saw. Um, the first thing, of course, was uh, indeed the monkeys. Oh, we, we went to the wrong screen for that. Anyway, there are a couple of chests that we can grab here. This is actually the last we're going to be seeing of Killika for good. All right. Uh, but first of all, we, yeah, we've got a couple of monkeys uh, that I ran around in the jungle. I didn't see the point in showing you guys all that stuff of every single little location. It was actually really easy to do. What a roller coaster the whole monkey thing's been throughout this series as well. Like, two different guides explicitly said online, okay, you can do it in chapter one and three, but not five. One of them I read said something else quite outrageous, and then finally I realized, oh, you can just, oh, we'll get that, this chest at least. Finally I realized, you can just do it. You can just do it in chapter five, and there's no rush. It's just doing it in the earlier chapters, I don't know, it might be sort of beneficial to you but as you guys are gonna see it's not even that beneficial to do it early so we talked to the lady after you found all the the monkeys up there and she says let me know if you find any other squatter monkeys in the woods okay we actually haven't found a single one yet before we'd spoken to her but then I got all of them at once and then she says how many squatter monkeys have you brought me let's see 13 I think Oh, so many monkeys! I don't know what to say. Here's a little thank you. And she gives us Chaos Maelstrom as a garment grid. This garment grid might seem to you guys like, uh, like a, a, a stat inflicting one. It's actually not. It's one of the class based ones. And this is the Dark Knight based one. So, like, if you did this in chapter one, and, uh, you claimed it then in chapter three, it would have been just after you went underneath Bevel at the end of Chapter 2 and just as you got Dark Knight. So you kind of would have got its corresponding grid if you did everything really, really, really early. None of my girls need to use this. I mean, if anyone would have it, it would have been pain. But yeah, that gives you Arcana and it gives you Arcana weight down if you go through all of the gates on there as well. But as I say, we don't really need to worry about it. The other thing as well was I spent so long grinding for money to buy the thing in the Calm Lands for you guys. And I never showed you the damn grid we got from it. So it's Disaster in Bloom. This is what we got from Open Skies, okay? So Sleep Touch, Silence Touch, Dark Touch, Poison Touch. And if you go through all the gates, which actually isn't too many sphere changes, you get a uh, stone touch. And again, a very unique looking grid there. Uh, we're going to get some cool ones as well coming up. We've already been getting so many cool ones. Uh, this, this game is crazy to me because I see so many really strong mechanics in it. So many really strong mechanics that I think could work so well if the story and the rest of the structuring of the game was slightly different. Like, genuinely, I think a game that you copy-paste a lot of these ideas, but you give the players the accessories and the grids, and you, you tweak the implementation of sphere changing and stuff just a little. Um, if you do that, you, you, you could have an incredible game on your hand with some really easily understandable concepts that nonetheless have like loads of depth to them. I, I think it's so awesome. But, you know, that's just another garment grid from the pile that we're never really going to have a reason to use, but hey, whatever. Uh, so, what are we doing else at Killer Care? It wasn't just about the monkeys, you can think of that as a little bit of a bonus. We're actually going back to visit Donna and Bartello. Why? Well, because of this. Thank you, Goings, for finding my area. Of course, it probably just ran off somewhere again. That's the gist of it. All translate, says Benzo. I am Bata Shadow's mother. My daughter simply adores money. She left the desert in search of a man of means, whatever that is. It turns out our man of means isn't quite what you'd expect. Oh, oh, oh. Turns out it's a former summoner. Don't get caught green handed, Bartshella. That's the gist of it. Okay. Surely that's Isaru, right? Surely that's Isaru. Well, no. This actually tripped me off again a long time ago when I first played the game because. It's like, okay, clearly they're talking about a guy, right? I mean, 
Bar Bartello never used to be a summoner. Only Donna did. But I guess maybe one of our clues is you do remember in one of the comms fits a while ago, we saw a cactuar in Donna's room. It's just you might have thought that that cactuar was the one that was on the overlook we already got in Killika. Killika is kind of weird that you, there's actually two cactuars you have to get from here. And both of them are in the like second bunch. So you have to come back here at least twice in chapter five. And here we go. Barcella. This is actually the ninth of ten cactuars. And the last one we probably have to explore spirit for. So here we go, guys. Who would have believed you've seen nine of these already? Nine of them. It's crazy. It doesn't feel like we've seen nine of them. Not to me, anyway. And as you can see, you get a couple of magic urns. What are they trying to say? That these two have got a lot of money? Is that what they're saying? I mean, they do live in a nice place. They basically live on, like, an island resort, as far as I'm concerned. So maybe there's something in that. But here we go. Ready to step into the line of fire. If the price is right. HP only 12. But strength is very high, and notably, agility is fairly high as well. So he's going to dodge a lot, and if he hits us, we're screwed, basically. So here we go. One. Oh, come on, he hit us straight away. Damn. No, we hit an urn. Hello. Oh, but we get items from the urns. I actually didn't realize we get items from the urns. One of them's still shaking. Let's try and shoot the other one, shall we? Oh, my eyes. There we go. Got it. I wanted it. Give me the item. Potion. Thank you. He's still shaking. Screw it. Should we just get the urns permanently? I mean, why not? Oh my god, he's moving so fast. There we go. Let's just keep going. Give me more items. Mega potion. It's oh, no, no, no. Don't shoot me. I'm sorry, Bartichella. That was a hell of a counter. There you go. That's probably my worst one so far. A chain of zero and a score of 100. But we get a ton of... <laughs> Look at Donna up there. Hi. <laughs> uh, um, I would be very curious if any of you guys beat any of my hotly fought for scores. Take her back to her mother. Her mother's really worried. So there you go. And, um, I don't know. Maybe you guys will consider this a little bit sad. Maybe. This is the last you're going to see of all of Spira on Killica. Sorry. All of Killica in Spira on my channel. This is, this is it. We're leaving now. We're leaving for good. There is nothing left to do in the game here. The only thing that we might have maybe had to do left oh, we can just go down this ramp here is, uh, is grind on the monsters in the jungle here to see their oversold versions to unlock the garment grid called the end which gives us that huge explosion thing if you'd never escaped from a battle. Remember all of that? That would be your only other reason to come here. We've got 100%. We've done everything now. Um, and I've actually already seen all of the oversold stuff in the jungle already. Why? Well, because actually Killika is the place that I chose to catch all of my chocobos for the chocobo ranch, which is now done. Ah! So I spent a lot of time here on this trip between the, between the episodes here. Lots of time. Um, I actually caught 14 chocobos from Killika. Um, determined if any of them could get to level 5, and like one of them could. So then I had to go back, release all of them and then refill the ranch again. And then I released six and refilled the ranch. And then I released five and then I refilled the ranch. And finally, I had enough level five chocobos. I did that all at Killika, where, I don't know, the rates are okay and they all have the same nature. You get bold chocobos from Killika. And so in the process of doing that, I saw all of the oversold stuff. And I actually leveled quite a few of our classes too. So, uh, so yeah, goodbye Killika. That really is the end there at last. A happy ending. For Donna and Bartello and and everyone in general, okay, right? Like we did a lot of stuff there. Where to next? Well, uh, since we did just get a cactuar, how about we go to the Beacon Our Desert? We've got to search Spirit and find those cactuars before Marlis runs out of strength. Well, how about we finish this up now? I don't know whether we're gonna fully, 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 fully finish the desert here because the girls aren't particularly strong. Uh, but we're gonna see. All right, so I'm gonna save before we do anything drastic at all. We now have every single cactuar. Uh, if you're curious about my playtime as well, we'll go to new data here so that I don't overwrite thing in anything badly in case this save recording dies as well. But our playtime, just so that you guys are aware, now that we're we're getting into some of the you know the longest stuff, let's have a quick look. Um. And yes, the date is, it's currently the 18th of February. Uh, 135 hours, 95% complete, but 135 hours of playtime. Very, very, very little of that is like AFK time as well. I actually feel bad about my PS, uh, my PlayStation. Oh, there's something cool as well. I don't know, can we talk to this guy to figure it out? He says, the Albed here spend their days in the boundless desert. Presently, we're surveying blah, 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 blah. But what you'll notice about that list is that it actually said central expanse. Does Nardless say anything? She says, I don't care how tough the fiend is, that's fine. You'll notice that Central Expanse is actually now available. This is really weird to me because I thought we would have got a cutscene or some dialogue about it, and we totally didn't. 
Uh, central expansion is kind of interesting. I've also off screen been doing a lot of digs and we're now done with these. And um, the central expanse is available because check it out. Pilot says, this time you'll be choco digging. Try not to get bucked. And a chocobo comes over. So uh, this is kind of a fun place that only unlocks if you do something quite special. You do all the Glasgow stuff to unlock the chocobo ranch. And then you deposit a chocobo to... Well, there we got some scrap metal, by the way, which is because we've basically got all the stuff we need from the desert. So we're getting lots of those now. It's like a 10% chance to get scrap metal, I think, once you've qualified for a lot of other things. And then uh, you just, they, they just mean nothing, basically. But uh, so if you unlock the Chocobo Ranch and then you send a level 3 plus Chocobo, or any level Chocobo actually, to Beaconel Desert, which we did. Remember back in Chapter 3, just before we moved on to do all the comms fist stuff? The last thing we did in the chapter was we sent one here. And the Albed find it, and then they realize they can use them to survey this last area, Central. Central's really good because you get no encounters, no ambushes. Decent rewards and you're quick so you can get lots of the digs and lots and lots of, the, lots of them as you guys saw there I think I've completed 63 digs successfully now and I've done so much digging I've got a bunch of sphere break coins and I have finished off the uh, Jose story which we'll go to very shortly But let's head to the Cactuar nation first. So that's been going off on on in the background there And I forget what I was saying before I segued into all of that, so we may as well uh, just ignore it for now. Uh, we're going to talk to this last mother. Benzo says I'll trans translate. Welcome back, Boss Sheila. I guess men of means aren't always men, are they, dear? That's the gist of it. My like, counter deceitful is that? Damn it. So Donna's a, a woman of means. And so now now, uh, now we've got all the, all the cactuars. That's nine of them. That is nine. Let's go have a talk to this one over here, though. I hate to admit it, but my failure can be a bit of a handful. He's really a very nice boy who just wants to be around friends, but he always seems to be falling in with the wrong crowd. Oh, I'm worried he may not That's even be traveling at all. Might not even be traveling at all. Well, oh my god, look, we got an X over here. Well, remember what we learned at the very beginning when we first came here to the Cactuar Nation? Let's talk over here and see if we get anything new. The last gatekeeper should be somewhere nearby. Please, you must locate him. Uni, let's go find him. Well, we'll have a look. Well, what did they say about that cave back there, hmm? The cave of the rogue cactuars? Oh, look at all the other ones that are around. This is great. I never actually test played this, by the way. This one bit of the whole batch I'm doing. I've got a lot of plans to record with you guys today. Um, this bit I did not test. Um, we're doing it first. Marnus says the other gatekeepers will help. Now, go, hurry. Oh, damn. And we begin a mission. This is not the only mission here before we get episode complete. But this does conclude the Cactuar quest. The last Cactuar. Who'd have thought the last Cactuar would be so close? But use the help of the nine gatekeepers you've already tracked down to bring that rascal home. Objective, find the tenth gatekeeper. Oh, yes. Thrilling stuff. Nice place. It says this is where the rogue Cactuars hang out. I guess the gatekeeper fell in with the wrong crowd. They're all holed up somewhere inside. Oh, here we go again. Absolutely. Let's teach them some social skills. Come on. Oh, man, there is something about teasing your audience with, like, a cave or a location or something for ages and ages and ages and ages and finally giving them access. I'm telling you, the, uh, the, the whole Metroidvania style thing that just speaks so, so well to me. It really is something I very much love. So, here we go. Uh, now, the, the decor here is a little familiar, perhaps, to you guys already. But, uh, so, Benzo says, this is the hideout for all the cactuars who don't want to become cacti. And what they do is really cool with the music here as well. Like, you've got the epic battle music outside, and then they move into just, like, the generic cave music here. All right, let, let's save again, I guess. Let, let's save again. And I actually had a, uh, a lure bracer equipped on one of my fiends there, which we didn't want. We had the lure bracer to get chocobos and stuff. So, let's go through. We will get a couple of random encounters. And because of all the grind, so we're going to be fine chocobos here. As you could probably have expected. Because of all the grind, some cool stuff has happened. Riku has maxed out Black Mage. Now, what does that actually mean she has different from previous episode? It means she now has all the Argus. Alright, you might have expected her to get Bio and Flare and Ultima and all that stuff. But that actually all belongs to other classes and other means in this game. She's just got the elemental magics, okay? So that's that's where you end ability-wise. But uh, what's really cool is she has Black Magic level 1 and level 2. Uh, sorry, level 2 and level 3. Which means she can cast very quickly. She also has Ring equipped, which is auto hasted her. And Pain has the Speed Bracer equipped that we got from the Calm Nans the other day. So what we're going to do on Riku is we're going to cast Thundargus, eh? 
We're going to multicast it. And what I want you guys to do is watch how quickly Riku can cast now. This is without the Black Tome equipped. Yeah, there was no bar there. That's because she can do it automatically. And apparently they guard thunder damage, which is really cool. Uh, sorry, lightning damage. They're also thoroughly evasive. I really hope I can do this. There's a thousand needles. Blue bullets. Don't, don't you guys worry about that kind of stuff. Uh, we'll just... Uh, we'll try a water aga. Was it just because it was thunder? No, I guess they just evade magic damage entirely. Wow. And, uh, and we're not hitting either. Pain is on Berserker right now. Okay, uh, this is gonna be kind of interesting. Did he just flee? Did he just flee, really? Oh, he totally did. These are just like the ones from the Thunder Plains. Except they're not spelt with Qs. Well, there's another escape, and they're gone. All right, so not huge threats, but that's a little bit worrying, considering the boss we have coming up. Who I freaking love, by the way. Ah, oh, it's gonna be really good. So, um... So, uh, yeah, she's very, very, very good on Black Mage right now, basically. It's going to be essentially useless in this dungeon, though. So how about we move her over? And uh, she had Ring in the Minerva's plate. She would have done a lot of damage. I had that set up for you guys, which I guess we won't be able to see. Uh, but let's go back to Alchemist here. Now, Alchemist, I've also been leveling. She's got some other stuff, uh, which I can show to you guys. And um, what I'd like to do, really, is just put her onto a little bit of damage, but not too much. Actually, in the list here, you guys will see this thing here, the Nature's Tome. So we actually have a tome. Where do we get this we got this tome from digging in central i've got a little bit more to talk about with that uh coming up in a second okay there we go and so we'll move on a little bit here uh riku is not the only one that's got interesting stuff going on i do want to talk about pain as well what i've also done is equip the nature's tome onto pain here because uh pain is a berserker right now so berserker she's got some new stuff she gets instinct she's gonna cast these quickly because i just put the tome on her so she's got cripple which halves an enemy's health mad rush which heavily damages an enemy but often fails we'll check out uh crack down do damage and nullify all their defensive stuff which is great that's d spell and it's like d spell strike i guess which actually never existed in the previous game uh instant kill there's lots of instant kills this is eject though in its rawest of form so there's not actually death that's eject uh, we get Intimidate, which is slow and do damage. You get damage and lower that accuracy and evasion. Unhinged would actually be really good against these guys because they're so evasive. And then uh, damage and poison. What I really want to show you guys, though, is Mad Rush. So let's use that on that Cactuar there. Yuna's on Psychic. We'll just get her to attack. She could actually use Mazer, right? Maybe, maybe Yuna can do stuff, but we're just missing so much. What Yuna could also do, I guess. We're just going to keep trying. There's another escape. Yuna could swap to Songstress. There, she got a hit. She did manage to land one here, at least. She can stop, swap to Songstress and uh, increase our accuracy with the song. And that would actually be a potential way for us to get more, more damage on. This is interesting. Like I said, I never did this. I mean, it's a very simple thing that we're doing here, but I wasn't quite sure how the balance of my girls would match up to this specific content. As you see on the mini-map, it's basically just a long road. And we got a little bit of a branch coming up. Oh, here's a regular mob. This is a friend of a cactuar, is it? We'll use Mad Rush on the salad then, shall we? Sayonara. And she says sayonara. I wonder if that's... Uh... I mean, that sounded so obviously an English person saying sayonara, but that's fine. Uh, yeah, let, let's go um, psionics and then let's use express because that raises our accuracy. And it hastes us. It's kind of like the perfect thing for hitting cactuar. So there you go. 3,000 damage. That isn't bad. And actually, uh, Pain does quite a lot with her regular attacks. There you go, actually, we've got a kill. Um, Pain's been really, really fun on Berserker. Like, really, really, really fun. I, I leveled up some Dark Knight stuff, and then I just decided, right, we'll, we'll go Berserker for a while. Oh, Mr. Salad, what happened? Oh, they're pissed we killed it. No, 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 no! Oh, and they have the power to make things big. Hmm. Fans of other Final Fantasy games might already know what's coming based on that and previous games. Uh, nothing to do with 10. Uh, but all right, so we got like a, a bit of a mini boss here. This is the heavy salad. I believe we should just be able to zerg him down, to be honest. He does have quite a bit of defensiveness to him, though, so we'll see. Uh, Pain, of course, can at any time armor break, and I'm wondering whether that'll help. Riku's just going to attack a few. Actually, we could mix with Riku. Why not? Right? She could easily mix. We'll go with an attack on Yuna. We'll teleport her behind as well. Now, there are some other mixes as well that I've been looking into that I do want to show you guys. It's just some of the items are still quite late gamey. I know we got a ton of good late gamey ones from... Um We'll just get, we'll roll with the attacks on pain. I know we got quite a few late gamey ones through the monster arena already. But I do want to... Um, but we are still lacking some key components for some really cool ones. Like, there's a boss I want to kill later that I want to use White Hole on, which is awesome. 
Uh, what else could we use with this? We could go in Venom. So in Venom is the one that does damage and poisons at the same time. And what's cool about damage and poison at the same time is, um... It, it's kind of like the, uh, you know, the Final Fantasy X uh, system where you have big scary monsters and you want to you want to poison them as they go through uh, Oh god, I, I don't know. Should we try and slay him? He's probably just gonna be immune to everything then. That's the thing Oh no, there we go. It actually worked. Yeah, he's been slowed. I actually think that's the first time in the series We've slowed someone here by the way if you look at Riku on stash I just used one of her abilities there. She actually has a lot of stashed abilities a lot because she's been learning a little bit more of Alchemist, and she is a fantastic support at this point. We're going to Berserk Pain. Um, and so as you can see here, she's got Potion, High Potion, Mega Potion, X Potion. All these abilities that don't actually cost us anything. A Mega Phoenix! It doesn't cost us an Omega Phoenix! How good is that? Oh my god. And because of her Garment Grid, she can still use the goods. Let's see if a little bit of damage can go rolling from there. Really, I want Yuna behind him. But she didn't seem to teleport behind him very well before. Yeah, she's not really getting back there. Oh, yeah, did that do a lot of damage? Did that do almost a thousand? Did Riku manage to slam in there? Let's try Time Trip as well from Yuna. Which is gonna stop time. Hang on just a sec. There we go. And I don't believe that I've shown this yet. Uh, so this is Time Trip. This is a very cool skill. As you can see, it actually borrows a little bit the uh, Blitzball UI up there. She did basically nothing with it. Um, but that's not like classic stop. And I think that'll hit pretty much anything. I don't know whether it'll hit some immune bosses, but it hits your friends as well. Really, really cool. Uh, and you can see some actual detail that they put into some of the international stuff there. Uh, this is this is this is this is far too slow. Let's try going to Gunner and pot shot it, shall we? And let's start mixing with Riku instead of casting Guz. Let's let's try and throw more elemental stuff at it, shall we? We'll go trigger happy to set up a good combo chain for Riku's mix there. Winter Storm. There you go. 800, 900. There we go. That was excellent. And down he goes. Super tanky. This worries me greatly. This worries me greatly. I really hope we can get through this upcoming fight. Good job, girls. That really was just a mini boss. Alright, and let's move on. I wonder what would happen if I had no encounters on whether whether we would have fought the salad at all. To get a little bonus room here. Uh, we do want to collect all of the chests as we go. And that'll become clear in a second. That's so pretty, the waterfall area back there. Well, I say waterfall, sandfall. It looks, it, it's funny actually how indistinguishable from a waterfall that sandfall actually was, but hey. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The floor is rising. Passage of sand. Those sneaky cactuars have set a trap. Hurry through the tunnel before it fills with sand. What happens if I stay like this right now? Will it bury me before I even press X? Surely it's going to stop somewhere, right? I want to see what happens. You guys see the animation of the sand slowly rising <laughs> against Yuna? What happens? Are we just going to get completely swallowed by the sand? This isn't actually taking my time out of the, the, the thing in a second, is it? Oh, there you go. It did stop. Okay, good. All right, all right, all right. Okay, I thought we were just going to get buried. Alright, so away we go. We want to get as many chests as we can. So let's jump up here, climb up, grab this. We've got 60 seconds, fairy earrings. We don't really care too much about actually. Um, and I'll put it here, take a right. I like this little passageway, it's cool. Because, I, I mean, like we recognise what this looks like. We, we, we saw this at like Gagazette, you know, the Gagazette style treatment. Alright, let's come up here, get another chest. We should be fine. The only thing I'm worried about is random counters, but I just don't actually know if we're going to get any. Alright, and then a big jump. And this is one of those cool places where we're actually seeing the jumping be used a little bit more, you know. Alright, through the, the small crack. Good. Was there a chest in there? I actually don't know. How do we get that chest up there? I don't know about that either. Hold on. No, it's been too long since I've done this. Yuna! Yuna, it's around your head! Run, girl! Uh, well, we do have that there. Oh, no. Okay, we've only got four seconds. Must climb out. No. Oh, damn it. Well, that's okay. We can try again. Oh, I should have waited and we could have got this chest second time. So, I believe the chests are actually persistent. So, you're not going to be able to get it all in one go. But, um, that's totally okay for us. Oh, my God. That's a big Sahagin. Oh, God. These cactars have been making stuff really big. And I'm not sure I like it. Let's berserk pain. Let's go over trigger happy over there. 
Surprisingly, on this file, Yuna still hasn't learned very much about what it takes to be a good gunner. She's only got, you know, basic trigger happies. There's Pain going mental, as you saw. That was two crits in a row, each doing 3,000 damage. All right. So here we go. The timer begins again straight away. Really seamless. I like that a lot. And um, we don't have to worry too much. So let's try and go through all the chests. Why not? Right? Like, so we got all of those. And then we got that one on the left. That was fine. And what about where it closes in here? Why, why is the camera so weird? That is odd, right? And then there's this over here. Oh, was there not actually a chest up there? Am I just imagining things? There's definitely a chest on that one, but this is the one we missed the jump up on, right? So we climb up this and then round the corner. Oh, she could just straight up and climb it. Oh, okay. Maybe the other one we could have just straight up climbed then as well. All right, that's fine. That's fine. Yuna, do you want to use your crazy goat legs again? Here we go. <laughs> there's nothing better than the friggin' jump she makes at- Well, actually, there's a lot of crazy, absolutely crazy jumps she makes, to be Yuna, climb! Climb! No! What? I'm trying to get her up. There's totally a platform we're supposed to be climbing here. But she's not- Yuna! What are you doing, love? Oh my god. Alright, we'll go again. Come on, you've only got yourself to blame. All right, there is definitely a chest here. Here we go. Here we go. All right, we're climbing. Okay, good. We, we come back in here. There you go. So a twist headband. The thing is, all these accessories are like kind of crappy, and especially considering how difficult this fight might be. I don't know. And this is the end of like such a long side quest as well. You know, like one of the longest ones. So it's a bit sad to see. Can we climb? Ah, there we go. We want the, that little thing. So it got a bit pushed off, be uh, put off there because you'd think that on the right is where you go second because that's where the chest is all right there we go we're up we're up we're up, we're up. excellent all right and uh, so let's move on just a little bit more not too much further on this windy passageway to go another uh, another battle with a jumbo sized fiend here oh god and it oversold why wait so if that oversold that means that these jumbo sized fiends are actually regular um Regular mobs just bigger, I guess maybe with some slightly inflated stats. All right, we'll go with that I really should be doing more with Riku when she's on Alchemist, but Alchemist I like it's so reactionary for me, right? Like Alchemist is like do you want to create a final potion a final Phoenix? Do you want to you know throw up a wall of defense all that kind of stuff the offensive mixes? I don't use too much Especially once enemies start becoming a little bit more comfortably immune to what you can throw out anyway a couple of far plane shadows That's fine move around. I wonder how many varieties of things there are as well. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Man. Uh, and of course, this is all in the name of defeating a big, bad, scary monster nearby. If you're wondering if I'm going to do that very soon, I'm not. And uh, it's for a simple reason. It's that it's bloody hard. And it, when I said that in the other episode, that's basically going to be one of the first. Uh, so there's Trigger Happy, a good example of how it's very hard to uh, dodge a Trigger Happy. Like it will hit most stuff. Um... Uh, what I said the other day about Angramenu being the first super boss we're gonna fight when I say super boss I really do mean super boss the girls are getting a lot stronger You'll actually notice we're all around level 60 now I actually went from level 45 to this current level purely from getting chocobos purely from chocobos Oh Hello How are you doing? There he is How do we recognize the difference? So this is the Fralia gang. Oh, yes. So, Fralia, here we go. This is number 10. Bad Cactuars can't put on a good face. And once again, just like with the others, we do not have to worry about defeating him. Uh, it says, hint, open wide. I don't really know what that means. Strength. He doesn't actually look too bad. 10, 10 health. All right, here we go. <laughs> Here's the problem. He doesn't look too bad, hen health, but here is the problem. How the hell are you supposed to tell who it is? So, the cactars have a very specific thing about their mouths, where a cactar with a Q had, like, the flat line of its mouth underneath and the rounded bit on top, and these guys have the reverse. But I really can't remember the way that you're supposed to tell who Fralia is. <laughs> I really can't. I think it's the one more in the shadow. Okay, so here we go. That one. No, that is not cat. That is not Fralia. All right. What about the first one in the light? That one. Okay. Fralia is the second one in the light then. There has to be a way to tell, surely. What is it though? They do all look slightly different. All right. So shadow, light, light. Ready? 
There we go. He dodged and countered. We dodged as well. We still got 22 ammo. We're really going to try for this one, guys. Here we go. This is it. I'm, I'm going to be so hyped if we get it. Damn it. Don't dodge. No, not you. Whoops. Okay, we dodged as well. Ah, oh, he dodged. I'm getting him on target, at least. Oh, my God. So evasive. What is this? Yes, we got at least one hit and an evade. Oh, and again, he dodges. All right, that's two hits. That's not bad. Oh, did it just... Oh, it's gone way too quickly now. Oh, my God. Dodged. Yes. Yes. Oh, my God. We're doing good, guys. We got five free... We got five safety nets here. Six. Oh, don't dodge. The, the thing is about the RNG is just annoying. Oh, no, that was just the wrong target there. Yes, five. Okay, we... All right, here we go, guys. We've got him to half health. Four health. Oh, my God. What even happened there? It's going so fast. Three health. Two health. Oh, my God. Have we got the dodge? One health. Oh, God. Wait, 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 wait. My eyes hurt. Stop. I need to refresh my eyes. I'm closing my eyes. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. 